All right, this video is for anyone who would like to practice five point perspective. This is a little bit trickier, but turns out really cool if you can just kind of get the rules down and make sure to follow along. Now I'm gonna do this um, using pencil and pen. The pencil is gonna be my guidelines and then the pen is going to be the lines that I really want for like the final um, artwork. So I'm gonna start with my pencil first and draw pretty lightly. I'm gonna draw a little bit harder so that you can see the lines, but um, you should draw everything super light as, as a guideline. So you can find something circular or use a compass. I just happen to have tape around, so I'm going to draw my sphere that way. So once I have my circle, I'm going to, um, almost like a crosshairs, put a line at top and bottom, side to side. Now, to draw the kind of spherical shape, um, I just always think eyeball beach ball. <laughs> so I do eyeball, so kind of a football shape. And then one more beach ball. And you can really do pretty much as many of these lines. Like if I was gonna do a really complicated one, I could do it bigger with a bunch of these, but this is kind of a simplified version. Then I'm just gonna go from the top and the bottom, eyeball, beach ball. They don't have to be perfect, they're just guidelines. Just like that. So really when you're doing five point perspective, sometimes people call it four point because you have one, two, three, four points. Um, but we're actually including the center of the sphere. If you think of this as like an actual spherical ball, the very center or the center of the earth is going to be your fifth um, perspective point. So what you do is all of the lines that are going um, like vertically, like a building would, are going to be going towards the center vanishing point. And then um, to kind of branch off of that, you're going to go to one of these vanishing points. So let me just show you using this square right here, how we can make this into a building. So I'm going to darken these four edges. Then I'm going to take the three corners closest to my middle vanishing point, and I'm just gonna draw orthogonal lines. Now to cut this off, it's the same rules as one, two, and three point perspective. I'm going to look at this line here and say, okay, it's going towards this vanishing point. So I'm going to slide it down and I'm gonna draw a line parallel also pointing to this vanishing point. So if you kind of kept going, it would go like that. Now this line to cut off here, I'm looking at being parallel with this line, which is going towards this vanishing point. So I'm going to draw that going towards that vanishing point. So now I have a building in five point perspective. Now I can do that pretty much anywhere and it's easier to use this square to like begin with, um, but you don't have to. You could start with something like your orthogonal lines first, kind of up to you on technique. And then I could think this line needs to go to this vanishing point so it's kind of curved. This line needs to go to this vanishing point so it's kind of curved. I have another one here, going to this vanishing point, and another one here, going to this vanishing point. So it's a little tricky to keep them all straight, but once you have some practice, um, it's pretty simple. And then the bottom is going to go to this vanishing point. This is gonna be cut off at that and I had a guideline right there so it was quite easy to do. 
So that is kind of the main um, interior buildings. Now you could have a building going above kind of that. This is almost like a horizon line, this outside edge, and you could have a building going above it. You just wouldn't see the top of the building. So let me demonstrate that. Um, let's put it, I'm trying to see where, where I have space for it. Um, let's put it like right here. So I'm, I'm just gonna draw the three orthogonal lines going to my vanishing point in the middle. So here's the edges of my building. Now they are still going to go to these vanishing points here when I cut it off, but I just have to kind of use my imagination more. So I'm gonna draw that line there and this line here going to this vanishing point. That kind of makes sense. Um, so really this building is tucked behind Now you can use these rules to add some additional uh, detail onto your buildings as well. So I'm gonna erase the lines on the inside. And what if I wanted like glass windows on that tall building? Well, I know that this line here is going to this vanishing point. So every line I draw is going to be pointed to that vanishing point with a little bit of a curve to it. So I just make sure to always point it to that vanishing point. I also um, try to make these lines closer and these lines farther away from each other so it looks like it's getting farther and farther away. So I could even emphasize that even more by doing something like that. So I could do it on this side too, but I know this side is going to this vanishing point. So I'm just curving it around. I could have this building, since I see a lot of the roof on this building, I could actually add some details to that roof and make it look even more three-dimensional. So I'm gonna first erase my lines inside of my cube so that I don't get confused. And now I'm going to add a line that's kind of headed towards the middle or thought, or the middle vanishing point from here. Just going to draw a little one right there. And then this line is going to be headed up towards this vanishing point at kind of a curve. And this line is going to be headed towards this vanishing point at a curve. And that way I can make the building look like it's kind of has a recess on the on the top there. I can also add some uh, roads pretty easily in this. And the roads just follow um, if if they're kind of like a a block, like a city block road, they follow the guidelines fairly simple. So for example, I can make my road go like this with a little slight curve to it. Maybe I'll have my road come out there. So you notice that this line is headed up to this vanishing point. This line is headed over to this vanishing point. We can add a road here, and we could even have it go behind this building a little bit. Like that. You can add the um, dashes. You just have to make sure the dashes are small and close together, and then they get bigger and further apart as it goes towards the center of the sphere. You can make little crosswalks, anything you want. Now, once I have that in, you can build building on top of building on top of building. For example, if I wanted to do a bunch of buildings back here, I just start with that main orthogonal line. I go towards this vanishing point. I go towards this vanishing point, add my orthogonal line going towards the center. I could even build buildings 
in the back further, just using those same rules. You can add um, like chimneys this way. You can build lots and lots of layers of buildings. Now, your five point perspective does not always have to be in a city. I'm going to use the other side of the sphere to show you how you could have a kind of outdoor setting here and use the same rules. Sometimes I'm, I get a little sick of drawing just buildings in perspective. So let's say I wanted to draw on this side um, a mountain scene with a lot of trees and maybe a tent or something. I could do that fairly simple. So for the first start, I'm gonna draw my tent. I'm gonna use this square to help me organize my space. I'm, tents are not rectangular, so I'm gonna draw a curve from that side to that side. Have the bottom of the tent point like that. So fairly simple little tent here. And of course you could get more detailed than that, but. something like that. Um, now, once I'm done with my little tent, I wanna give myself a little uh, scenery to go with it. So all of my trees, I'm gonna to go towards that middle vanishing point. Could even have some trees peeking out from the other side of the world. I'm gonna draw this horizon line. And then you can just simply put in some details here. Another way you could use this to draw more of like an outdoor nature vibe is to add a river. Now this river um, is going to be more organic than a road, but follow the same idea that it goes um, thicker and bigger towards the center of the sphere and narrower towards your poles. So I'm just gonna have it curve around here and up to here. And now as I draw the other side of the river, I'm gonna make it go bigger towards the center and then smaller as it goes towards the poles. I could also have kind of a mountain scene. I can put some mountains in here. And now we're just thinking of more like atmospheric perspective. So as I color this and add detail, I can make these look further in the background um, just by using some not linear perspective, but atmospheric perspective. How much detail I add to it, what color it's going to be, that kind of thing. I can also add a few more trees pointing to the middle of my orthogonal. Now these are not really to scale. This is more like a illustration that I'm exaggerating some scale, but you kind of get the idea there. So once I'm done with mine, I would maybe add some more details and things up here, but I have a lot of guidelines there. And you can kind of see that it's following those same rules. And then since I've used a, a nice pen that won't blur, I can just go ahead and erase all of my guidelines. And that is how we draw in five point perspective. So now they're all hidden, but we had a vanishing point here, 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 and here. And that is five-point perspective.